Hello, welcome to this video series on Composer. In this first video, we're going to locate and install the Composer software. So go to your search engine and type in the term Composer. It's spelled with a K. It should be the first result, which is Composer.net. So if we open that up and on their homepage, select the download. This first option here is for the latest stable version of Composer for Windows. If you're using a Mac system or Linux, you'll have to scroll down a page a little, uh, locate the link applicable to you, e.g. English, Mac or Linux. But in my case, I'm going to go with the Windows version. So I'll click on download. We'll save that file. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Okay, it's 7.6 megabytes, so it should download quite quickly. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'll just go back to my desktop. And that's what it's just downloaded. If I right click on that, extract it. Okay, that's extracted it to a folder on my desktop. I'll just drag that in for you to see. There we are. If we double click and open that up, here's our files. And the one we need to launch is the Composer application, as highlighted here. Or for easier reference in the future, if we right click on that one, and click on Send To, Create desktop shortcut. You'll see what that's done. It's actually made a shortcut on the desktop. So if we need to launch our Composer software, we just double click on that one. And that brings up the, the software. So we're ready to start creating our website. And we'll talk more about that in the following videos. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Hello and welcome to this video on Composer. Before we open up the software and start creating our first website, what we need to do is create a folder where we're going to store the files and the images of our website. So here I am on my desktop. If I right click new folder and create a folder with a name relevant to the website I'm about to create. So I'm going to call this my first website. Okay. Uh, if we double click and open that up, you can see of course it's empty. If you're going to use images on your website, and I'm sure you are, the best thing to do is create a folder within there called images. Okay, you'll see I've entered that in lowercase letters. And I recommend you enter all your file names and folder names within your website in lowercase and avoid using spaces and special characters because your web server does prefer things that way and it keeps things neat and tidy for the future. Okay, double click and open up the images folder. Of course, it's empty. But I did prepare some earlier. I prepared one called photo, I prepared a footer and I prepared a header. Okay, now we're set to go. Okay, let's open up our composer software. And you see the cursors blinking within the workspace, ready for us to start creating. Before we do anything, let's save this. Even though it's blank, best thing to do first is save it. File, save. Give it a page title. I'm going to call this my first website. Okay. Also, you need to give it a file name. As this is going to be our main home page for our website, we need to call this index. Okay, make sure it's within the location of our folder within my first website. Okay, and save. If you've used any word processing programs before, then these icons up here will no doubt seem quite familiar to you. And um, if they don't, don't worry, we're going to go through them over the course of these videos. The first thing you might want to do is change the color of the workspace, change the background from white to something else. I'm going to change it to gray. 
To do this, click on Format, Page Colors and Background, Use Custom Colors. You can see these are the custom colors. The background, click on that box there. This swatch comes up. I'm going to select the gray. OK. OK. And then to start entering content for your website, the easiest way to do this and to control the layout of the website is to use tables. So click on the table icon. This grid comes up so you can select how many rows and columns you wish to be in your table. I'm going to select a three by one. That means I can insert a header, a footer and have content in the center. Once the number of squares you require is highlighted, left click the mouse, that inserts the table. Next we need to change the size of the table and we're going to position it in the center. So to edit the table properties, right click anywhere in the table, click on table cell properties. This allows us to change the cell properties or the table properties. So to change the table properties, click the table tab. The width, I'm going to change that to 600 pixels. The border, I'm going to put to zero, spacing to zero, and the padding to zero. Align the center, align the table to the center. OK. Now, for that table, I'm going to change the color of it to white. So again, right click, table properties, background color, select white and I recommend if you're using text you'll use black text on a white background okay so let's change to white then it remains to insert the header and the footer so click in the header cell to position our cursor there insert image okay the image location remember it was in the images folder so click on this icon here um, in my first website images folder select the header open and that gives the location there and you'll note that this checkbox should turn up URL is relative to page location which means that um, it's looking within the folder we created earlier rather than some spurious location within your hard drive remember to stick to images that you've already transferred into that images folder now in addition to that you could enter some alternative text so here I'm just going to put header when you create proper websites you can be a bit more creative with the alternative text because it can help with the search engine optimization okay and you see that inserts the header similarly we need to insert the footer so move the cursor to the bottom cell insert image Browse to footer, OK, alternative text, footer, OK, that's popped up there nicely. So we've got the header on the top cell, the footer on the bottom cell, and this midsection is where we're going to type our content. Hello, welcome back to this video series on Composer. Okay, in the last video I showed you how to create this table, which will contain all your content. We set up a header and a footer image. And in the center, we're going to start entering our content. Now, obviously the easiest thing to do is enter text. So for example, hello, this is my first website. Okay. What we can do with this text is if we highlight it, we can change the text to any of these down here. So by default, it's times. Arial is often a popular one to use on a website. You see that's changed it. You can make it bold. You can make it larger or smaller. You can change the color, which if you click on this, little box here let's make it burgundy red okay 
as you can see. We can also change the alignment. Currently that's aligned to the left. We can center it or right align it. Let's pretend it's a title and we're going to center that. So we'll change these to capitals. Okay, now let's suppose we wanted to insert that image, that photo image that I'd upload to the images folder earlier. Go to insert image, locate the image, photo, open, alternate text. Okay, that inserts the image into the um, cursor position. You can change the alignment to left or right. I'm going to have it left. Now I'm going to insert some text. Okay, by default the text is added at the base of the photo. You might wish to have it at the top of the photo. To do that, you need to change the image properties so right click the image, down this list is image properties, go to the appearance tab where it says align text to image by default at the bottom, change that to at the top, okay and that moves the text to the top of the image. You'll also note the text is tight against the edge of the image, to add a margin, again Go to image properties, appearance, spacing, let's have a 10 pixel spacing between the left and right, okay, that inserts a neater looking margin there now, again you can format this text, you can make it bold, you can change the colour, okay, and then you can change the font, We'll go for Arial again. Okay, as such. I'm going to put that back to black. Okay. Something else you can do is also insert a table into a table. So, for instance, let's suppose you want to insert a table here. Go to Table, Insert, Table. I'm good to make this two columns by three rows. OK. I'm going to increase the size. So I'll click on the table icon, table tab, increase the width to 300 pixels, change the borders, spacings, and padding to zero. Okay. Okay, in fact I think I want that a little larger. What I'm gonna do is gonna move my cursor over this little checkbox there, hold down my left mouse key and drag it to the size I want. So that looks about right. And this column here, I want this to be much slimmer, about fifty pixels. What I'm going to do is, you see in this top bar here, again move the cursor over the line so it turns to a double arrow, hold down the left mouse key and move it to the size you require, let's say 50 or thereabouts, okay and that resizes that box. Now in there I'm going to insert an image, I'm going to insert a checkbox. I don't yet have a checkbox in my image folder, but I've got one I can use. So I'm just going to my image folder again, which is located in there, in images. And let's drag in this checkbox. Okay. And now I can insert that image. is open 
just call that tick. Okay. And I want to copy that into there and there as well. So I'm going to highlight, right click, copy. Go to that cell, right click, paste. And the cell below, right click, paste. That's pasted those three checkboxes into the three cells. I want to center those. So I'm going to highlight all three cells by holding down the left mouse key and dragging over the cells. Click the center alignment and that centers the three checkboxes. Then I want to insert some description into the adjacent cells. So for instance, this is point number one. This is point number two and number three. Okay, I'm happy with that so far. So let's save that. Remember to save your work as you go along. You don't want your computer to crash. Once it's saved, if you click on the browse icon, what that does, it loads up your web browser with the web page you've designed in it. And this is what it will look like when it goes live. Okay, so we've got the footer and the header and our content there, as you saw us design earlier. Let's close that down, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Hello, and welcome back to this video on Composer. So far, we've created a single page website. What we're going to do now is create some extra pages and insert navigational links so we can hop between those pages. Okay. I'm going to insert the navigational links just above this title. And um, what could they be? For instance, we could have home. We can have um, contact us. And we can have about us. I'm going to change the format of that. I'm going to write justify it. Take the bold off make it smaller now this page this will be our home page we need to create the contact us page and we need to create the about us page to do that what I'm going to do is save this page we've got at the moment which you remember is called index.html the page title of it is my first website so using this as a template we're going to save this file as um, contact save and we're going to save the page as about us and you see those pages have been added to our folder and we'll use these pages as templates for our website okay this page we see is the about us.html file it still has the title my first website now to change that, if you go down here and you click on the source tab, what you'll see is the source of this page. And at the top, actually line number six, between these title tags is the title of the web page. Now this one, we're going to change it to about us. Okay, go back to normal. And you see that's changed to about us. Now we're going to open the contact page. You see it opens in another tab, contact, HTML. That's called my first website as a title. Again, we'll change that by going to the source code at the top in between the title tags. We'll change that to contact us. Go back to normal. Okay, and finally, we need to open the original index page, which is called My First Website. That's OK as it is. So now we've got the three separate pages. The About Us, saved as aboutus.html. The Contact Us, saved as contact.html. And My First Website, which is our home page, saved as index.html. And this is the navigational links that we're going to use and edit 
to hop between the pages of our website. Okay, what we're going to do first is highlight this piece of text at home. Click on the link icon. It says enter a web page location or a local file. We'll browse. And our home page is index. Open. That comes up there. Click OK. You see that's now changed to an underlined blue colour, which indicates the default hyperlink text. We're going to highlight contact us. Click on link. Browse. Select contact. Open. OK. And finally, highlight about us. Link. Browse. About us. Open. OK. So on this page, my first website, we've activated these links. Now, when we're actually viewing this in our browser, by clicking on these links, we'll hop to the appropriate web page. OK, we need to repeat this for the other two web pages, the contact us and the about us. Now, the shortcut way to do this is if I highlight all of this, right click copy, go to contact us, highlight the same there, right click paste. OK, and the About Us, right click, paste, OK, it's inserted some spaces there, we can just hit the Delete key, and remove those, the same thing happened there, hit the Delete key and remove the space, OK, so all three pages now have the navigational links active, make sure you save each tab, one saved, that one saved, and that one saved. Okay, and then you can edit each page as you need to. So, for instance, hello, this is the about me page. Okay, delete that one, save that, contact us. Hello, this is the contact page let's highlight and delete that oops I want to delete this table table delete table okay here for instance you might type you may contact me by email at bob at my new site dot com and therefore people then know that's your email address we'll save that um, my first website that's fine as it is okay so we've created our three pages and we've created navigational links between them now if we click on the browse and see what that looks like in our browser. Here we've got the About Me page. Let's click on Home. That takes us to our home page. Contact. That takes us to the contact page. About Us. Hello, this is the About Me page. So they're all working fine. OK, I'm going to close this browser window. Go back to my composer window. I'm not going to change the about us page anymore, so I can close that by clicking this red cross. Contact us, I'll close that. I'm back on the home page now, and what I'll show you in the next video is how to insert video from YouTube or other video sites such as that. Okay, I'll see you then. Have a great day. Hello, and welcome to this video on composer. In this video I'll show you how to embed a YouTube video into your website. Okay, let's add a title here. Okay. 
let's format that center make it larger bold add some color okay change the font let's use Arial. okay move the cursor to the exact position where you wish to insert the video okay go to YouTube once you found your video you'll find a little embed tag if you click on that some code will open up below it it will begin with the word object width once that's highlighted right click copy that copies it into the clipboard go back to your website insert HTML paste that code into the window there insert that inserts the um, object you'll only see this blue box you won't actually see the video until your website is actually published live on the internet but if you save it and click on browse you can see what it will look like you scroll down and you see the video is being placed there exactly as we expected let's just click play to see Okay, that's done all quite straightforward um, I hope you have fun with that and have a great day hello and welcome to this video on composer in this video we're going to introduce CSS which stands for cascading style sheets most modern websites use CSS to control the layout and the formatting across the entire website and if you use website templates to build your own websites you'll find that the modern ones they use CSS too and once you get into WordPress themes and start manipulating those, you'll have to know CSS then too. Okay, let's start with a blank worksheet. So let's save this. Call it a test page. Just leave it as test page. Okay, though there's nothing on the actual preview window, if we go to the source, there's a little bit of HTML there to start with just to introduce the document type HTML and gives the page title there if we go back to our normal window and type in a title this is my title okay without any formatting at all let's take a look at that in the source and you can see that's been applied there hello this is my title go back to normal if we want to apply some formatting to that let's suppose we made it red okay made it larger and bold as such go back to the source code and you can see the title hello this is my title now has some attributes such as a color which in computer speak is rgb 20400 or red the font weight is bold and it's used these big tags to make the text larger okay there is a another way to do that okay let's remove that formatting by clicking the undo so we get back to our original state as such and let's type in some more text this is the main text of my website also known body text okay so by default as I say this is known as the body text and you'll see here within this field it states body text which is the format of what you see so there is a way to change that body text by using the CSS to get into the CSS click on the cascades icon there and what we're going to do is create a style rule it's checked at the moment as style applied to all elements of type if we click on this drop down arrow and select body text we're going to create a style rule okay so it's asking us to create a style rule for body click on the tab text and then you can begin by formatting the text within this area if I just move this box a little and you can see behind the actual text in the composer window and as we make changes here you'll see it happen 
in this preview window here and also on our actual web page here. So first let's change the font family. Let's have it as Arial and you see that's changed. The font size, let's make that 14 pixels, okay, which is PX. You could make it 14 centimeters, but that'll be a little large, or millimeters, or points. And you can use this up and down arrow to make it bigger or smaller. And you can see how that changes there and there. Let's go back to 14 pixels. Yeah. We can change the color. I mean, for body text, you'd really want to keep that black. But let's see what it looks like in red. Okay, you see that changes. But let's go back to black. Okay, you can change the font weight, maybe bold. Let's leave that as normal. And you can apply text decorations such as underline. But again, for body text, let's just leave it as a regular black. Click OK. And that applies the formatting to the body text which we've now defined. But what about this title? Let's highlight that. And here, push the drop down arrow. What I'm going to do is apply what's called a heading one. Now, when I click on that, you see it applies the heading one formatting. And if you go to the source code, you can see hello, this is my title is now surrounded by these H1 tags. There and there. The H1 tags are very important because the search engines place a lot of emphasis as what's contained within those H1 tags. So you'll want to use them, but obviously you'll want to apply your own format to it rather than the default of Composer. So to do that, again, go to the CSS icon. Okay, we want to add a new style. Click on this icon here, the palette icon. Okay, new style. And we want to change the H1. Create style rule. Okay, that adds H1. And you can change that just as you did previously with the body text. So for this one, Let's have Arial. Font size, let's make that bigger. So let's make that 20 pixels. Okay, and actually let's make it a little bigger. How big? 24, 26 pixels. For a title, let's use the red. Okay, font weight, let's go bold. And if you wish, you could add any text decorations. Line through underline I'm not going to add any text decorations but I think I will change a case so as to capitalize that makes the first letter of each a capital letter okay and you see it's changed the format of our h1 okay let's add one more piece of formatting let's suppose we wanted this is a sub title Okay, and we can change that to, rather than heading one, we can have heading two. Okay, and using the CSS, we can change the formatting of that heading two. So click on the CSS icon, on the palette icon, new style rule for the H2, create style rule, and let's go to text, keep that as Arial. Font size, 20 pixels. Color, let's also have that as red. Okay. Um, let's make it a little smaller. 18, and let's capitalize it too. Okay. So now we've created a heading two. Okay, let's take a look at what we've actually done there. If we click on the CSS icon, and you see we've changed the body, let's click on the body, and the star rule which we've applied under this general tab, you can see for the body we've made the font family Arial, font size 14 pixels, the colour black, and the font weight normal. For the H1 tag, font family is Arial, font size 26, the colour in hexadecimal is 990000, which is red font weight bold and the text is capitalized 
uh, for the H2, uh, similar to the H1, but the font size is 18. OK, and if we go to the source code, you can see in the HTML code, those styles actually appear at the top of the sheet between these style tags there and there. Okay, you see we've got the H1, H2 and the body. If you were to create lots of web pages such as you would for a complete website or if you have many web pages of a similar design what would be a good idea is to take all this between the style tags so from here to here and cut that and actually save that in its own document so if I paste that in my notepad and save that as well typically they're called style dot CSS save okay and then rather than having the style in each and every single web page what you would do is put a link here to that style sheet we just created and then when you wanted to update a web page rather than updating each web page individually you could just update the style sheet so for instance you could change the the font size of the h1 to 20 on your style sheet or maybe even the color to zero zero which is black and let me show you where i get those numbers from if you go back to composer and click on the go to the normal window click on the color icon so black you click on that it changes the hex value so that's all the zeros whereas red was the 9900 if you wanted a blue color that's 000066 which you can change on your style sheet by using 00666 and then save it and that color change would apply across all the web pages which you have linking to this style sheet and anyway, I'll go into more about that in upcoming videos. So until then, have a great day. Hello and welcome back to this video series on Composer. In the previous video, we introduced CSS and looked at changing the, the elements of type, which were the elements within this box here. In this video, we're going to look at changing elements of class. So for instance, let's assume you wanted to change this body text here you wanted to highlight it with a yellow background and maybe use italic text using the italic button as such and that formats the text as we wish now if you're only using a, a small web page and you haven't got much to do then you might as well do that but if you're designing larger pages or complete websites or using the template you've downloaded then it's more professional to use CSS so I'm going to show you how to get that effect using the CSS elements of class. So let's undo that change to get back to our original state. Okay, click on the CSS icon. Now we're going to create a new style rule. So click on the palette icon there to create a new style rule. And this time, rather than elements of type, we're going to be dealing with elements of class. So check that radio button there. And we need to give our new style a name. As you see, Composer starts it with a, a full stop or a period. That's how you should name your classes, starting with a full stop. This one I'm going to name Highlight. So it's dot highlight. Create the style rule. And the text we used italics. And the background we'll set as yellow. OK. OK. Then highlight the text. You wish to format and now in this element of class drop down box we have the highlight option click on that and that highlights the text as such using our element that we've just created okay let's create another element of class let's say we want to call one big blue I mean, what we want that one to do is make large big blue text so go back to the CSS create a new style 
let's call that big blue create style text let's use Arial font size 36 pixels color blue okay font style Ooh, let's leave that as normal weight bold case all uppercase okay so let's affect that change to this part of the text highlight the text drop down box big blue and that applies the style that we've just created and that wraps up this video on css and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome back to this video series on composer in the last two videos we discussed css and just to remind you if i click on the css icon we spoke about elements of type elements of class in this video we're going to talk about custom style rules if we check that and drop down box we can see the the internal style sheet includes the a active a hover a link and a visited attributes and that refers to these hyperlinks here we actually see a hyperlink is blue and underlined we could change a style so that when we hovered over it with our cursor the style would change and if we were on an active page we could also change a color usually that's purple by default what i want to do is change the style of these links so that ordinarily they're red without any underlining when we hover over them they remain red but become underlined and if they're active or visited they just stay as normal red which avoids us having multiple colors in our line which it's not that attractive so open up the style sheets and we want to create a custom style and we're going to change the link to start with create new style rule at the text as i say we want that to be arial we'll have it red okay and we'll have no text decoration okay that's still got the underline on there let's see if i can change that go back to the style sheet the a link the text text decorations click on none okay and that removes the underlining okay next we want to change it so that when hovered it becomes underlined so go back to the css create a new style custom style rule hover create style rule text so also arial color red okay and we want this to be underlined okay and there you can see when i hover my cursor over it it becomes underlined and finally we create a new style for the visited create star rule and i want that to be arial and red with no decoration okay and finally We've done the link, we've done the hover, we've done the visited, and the active. We wish to make that red too. Red, okay. Arial, no underlining. Okay, if we save that, and take a look at that in our browser. Okay, here's our link. So you see we change them to red and when we hover over them. That's supposed to be on the line, but for some reason it's not. Let me see if I can work that out. Nope, that's not working. Let me go back to our composer page. Let's take a look at that style sheet. Okay, sometimes the issue is browser compatibility. Just because something works in 
Internet Explorer doesn't guarantee it works in Firefox and vice versa. So in this instance for a workaround, I'm going to change the attribute to the border. So I'm still on a hover, go to borders. Um, I'm going to uncheck this box, all four sides use the same border style. I'm going to change the bottom border to a solid line, um, pixel weight of one pixel and color red. OK, so that has the same effect as placing an underline and hopefully that will work in all browsers. OK, let's see, so that works OK on the um, Composer page. If I save that and look at it in the browser. OK, yep. So there's just a little workaround to show you these things aren't perfect and there are little nuances between browsers you have to be aware of and work out these workarounds. Now if I were to click on one of these links, let's say the Contact Us, that takes us to the Contact Us page we made earlier. And as you can see, because we never set any styles for that page, it's gone back to defaults, which is purple for the visited links. Go back to home. And you can see the styles are effect on the home page that we changed. So this would be a good idea to show you how we can use the same style sheet across the entire website. Okay, so let's close this down and go back to our composer window. And if you look on the source code, right to the video, the top of the page between these style tags was the actual style sheet, so to speak. And we really want our websites or our web pages to refer to these styles across the board. So what we can do, if we go back to our normal page, click on Cascades, and there's a little box here which says export style sheets. So if we click on that, uh, we can save the file as a style sheet. I'm going to call it style dot css so whatever you call it it needs to end in dot css we'll save that now you see the change up there which means it's no longer referring to the internal style sheet but to this style sheet file that you've just created okay and if we look at our source at the top of the page all that style text has gone and has been replaced by this link to the style sheet that we just created okay so if we open up our other pages the contact and about us page open contact as you can see there's no style formatting on there so to apply that formatting that we've already used go to go to the palette icon and click on the down arrow click on linked style sheet choose a file the file being the style sheet we just exported earlier double click on that click on create style sheet and you can see that's imported the style sheet dot css okay and that's changed our style to match our previous page now if you take a look at the source code and that refers to the style sheet there with that link okay and also we need to change the about us page so we'll open up the about us page cascades link style sheet choose the file double click on style create style sheet okay and we need to save that uh, just a note while we're on this screen next to the title is this red disk icon which means what you're looking at isn't currently saved it's just a little reminder there from Composer. So if we click on save, that disappears. Contact us page, click on save, that's disappeared. So all our files are now saved and all the style sheets have been updated to point to that one single style sheet as our point of reference. So let's take a look at that in our browser. Okay, and we can flick between the home, the contact, and the about us. And we see that style sheet has been applied across the board. 
Okay, so let's close down these windows and take a look what we've done over the course of these videos so far. Okay, remember here, this is the folder we created to contain all of our files and images, etc. So if we open that up, you see we created a folder called images and that contains all our images. We created a website we called index. This is our main page or our home page, and this is the page that will load up, load up when you type your domain name into your browser. And these are the other web pages we designed, and they all have links to and from each other. And this is the style sheet, which is applied to these websites. So any website templates you download will probably take this format, and you'll be able to understand all being well exactly how they work and you can start creating your own masterpieces so all that remains for us to do now is to upload these files to our own web host and we'll discover more about that in the next video so have a great day i'll see you then the best way to get these files from your hard drive and up to your web server is by using what's known as an ftp program ftp stands for file transfer protocol the program i use and lots of other people use is called filezilla um, FileZilla is free and very powerful and very easy to use. So to locate it, go to your search engine, type in FileZilla, and it should be the number one result. So if we go there and download it, okay, make sure you download the one that you um, require. It's the client download, and mine's for Windows. You could have Linux or Mac, etc. So once done that, download it and install it on your PC and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, once you've downloaded and installed FileZilla, open it up and it should look something like this. You can see there are various window panes. Then you can toggle them on and off using these toggle buttons here. I have them all pressed, so you'll see something like this. On this left hand side are the files on your local site, that's your hard drive. On this side will be the directory of what's on your web host. And first we need to connect to the web host. That's this button here. So if you click on that, it opens the site manager. When you first download it, you won't have any sites on there like I have. You'll have to make a new site. And you'll have to type in your host name, your FTP username, and your FTP password. You can get all these off your web host. The one I'm going to use, I've already set up on newbiemarketingcourse.com. So your host will be of the name ftp.yourwebsite.com. Then your username and then your password. Click connect. You'll see in this window pane the progress. Now once it's successful, you'll see the files on your remote site. Now typically... You want to navigate to your public HTML account. Now yours will probably be empty if it's brand new, but I've already got lots here already. Next, we need to locate those files we wish to upload, which, as you recall, are on the desktop, contained in the folder My First Website. And there they are the images, the index, the other web pages, and the style sheet. So we're just going to highlight all those by Control and click each one. Then it's right click upload. And you can see in this window it starts uploading. If there's only a few files it'll be very quick. If you've got lots of files and large images it'll be a bit slower. But once it's done, it's successful. And you close that down. Okay. Open up your web browser again. Typing a domain name. Okay, and there's our website. Home page. Contact us page. The about us page. and the video.
Okay, I hope you agree that wasn't too difficult. It might help you if you watch all these videos again from the beginning, just to reinforce the ideas. And then I wish you all the very best of success in creating your own websites. Thanks very much and have a great day. Thank you.